All right, so here we are with game five, or round five. I'm actually playing against, and technically, somehow, despite the most horrendous play and taking a half point by, um, I'm actually in contention for first. I have two and a half, uh, two and a half points. I'm playing against on board one against the guy who's in first place, who currently only has three points. And uh, if I would win this game, I actually have a shot at uh, winning the Mo Class Championship, which is crazy, given how horrendous I've played. And I did really, even though in retrospect, I don't feel so bad about that Nimzo game as I did at the time, uh, I, I, I've been getting outplayed and misevaluating the position in every game. And here we get, um, we get E4. I guess I should flip the board here. Let's do that. And because uh, I'm playing the black side, we get a Karakon. And a Karakon Advance, which is... Still, maybe my like least favorite when they play the the good way, which my opponent does. He captures. Uh, I love this stuff when they play uh, play c3, but uh, it's just not as good. There's a reason why I love it. So he captures here, and we have quite quite a bit of theory. You know, I thought, is he going to play out this way? No, he doesn't. He plays this move. We come back, and he plays knight f3. We play this a5, and I'm I'm just rattling these moves off quickly. B5, and then um, here. I play this, he's delaying this move. And uh, the point is, it, I need to come out this way with my knight, so he's delaying it. He plays bishop to d3, and uh, I already kind of missed my chance. I sort of get thrown off by by this delaying. And the key move in these lines, which I didn't really play, because I, I thought it was too early. Again, making a too early evaluation on a position is its not how you evaluate things. You can't just blankly say it's too early. I, I play f6. Uh, f6 is the main idea. I don't have to play just this moment. I can, after queen c7, it becomes a lot harder to play because I, I need to control the f6 square. Uh, I can do other moves. I mean, I could play knight a6 and let him take, um, but I was just playing sort of standard. But if you just play f6 immediately and say bishop b2 now, uh, great, I'll go knight f6. If he, if he ever captures, now I'm just incredibly happy. This would be, this would be phenomenal. I get everything I want. These pawns are free. I, I'm going to be able to get my bishop going. I can castle. I'm going to have a big center. Everything would be great. Uh, so after f6, probably not going to take. I'll play h6. Instead, say, I don't know, say he plays queen d2, threatening to come here. Well, I can just castle. If you capture here... Uh, this is not a problem, because I'm hitting this bishop. Yes, 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 you can take with check. Um, but I'll just play king to h8, and now I have this threat and this threat, and you can't really do both. Um, so that's not really a, a problem. You still can't take. So let's say that white castles first. Uh, again, but now I can go knight f7, and I'm going to force you to take. So now you can finally take. I can grab here. And if you try to be clever and capture this, threatening to win this, no problem, I keep it a queen. And this rook is actually hanging. And so you're forced to play c3 or knight here. And uh, I get e5 in. I have this huge center. It's well defended. My bishop's going to come out. And this would be a dream position. We're already so much better. So this, this is the takeaway. How to get counterplay in this advanced structure early on. It happens much sooner than you expect. Instead, I went kind of it's just standard. I was like, oh, okay, just like in a lot of these advanced positions, we want to put pressure on the e5 pawn. Um, we never get any significant pressure. He plays queen to e2, defending it. We played b6, and I played here, and I brought the bishop out, because this is all just kind of standard stuff, but I, I don't have this f6 plan going anymore. Uh, so here, and... You know, I have some ideas. I probably should... I sometimes have played a4. Usually earlier on I've played a4. Like, before they've castled and before I've played b6. Because there's some ideas with this check, which can be kind of obnoxious. Uh, but also, it just keeps these pawns split. Has this one... This uh, b5 pawn is kind of a naggling target. And... Uh, <clears throat> and also, with this pawn here... This knight can't have access to the b3 square, which is going to end up being important later on. So b6, uh, I'm just going to develop my bishop. And my thinking was is that at some point, white's going to play c4. That's just kind of the main idea that they have. And once c4 has happened, um, there's likely to be an exchange here one way or the other. Either, either he'll take me or I'll take him. Either way, my bishop is going to get some freedom. So I wasn't feeling that concerned just yet. Um, 
So Bishop B2 finally happens. I finally get my knight out. And uh, I feel like I'm okay. Knight BD2 is played. And I definitely now should play this E4 move. Or sorry, A4. And again, because then if I play A4, this knight's totally restricted. It has nowhere to go. Can't go to either of these squares, and I couldn't go to this square. So I'd be blocking all forward momentum from this pawn. Uh, castle um, here. And, you know, I'm, I'm not really worse... Actually, I'm not worse at all, especially after this move. My opponent spent 40 minutes and came up with this move. I'm not really sure why you would choose this rook. I still don't understand. Perhaps he was worried about some lines with this pawn. I have no idea what he was saying. Uh, but again, a4 is, is kind of my chance. And then I can play knight c5, and this knight can't be contested. So I play knight c5 immediately, and now this move comes. And my original idea... Uh, when I played knight to c5, was I wanted to play knight to a4, and this is quite an obnoxious move. Um, you're kind of forced to come out to d6, which is maybe a bit bit of a weird place, uh, but I can just bring over here, and if you try to play like c4 now, uh, well, I just come over to here, and, and I'm going to get what I want. Your bishops are maybe a little bit loose. Um, yeah, this would feel this would feel great if I could get something like like this. Instead, I didn't play here because I thought that c4 would just come, and you're defending the bishop, and then my rooks, my the rook and my queen, you know, I still have flashbacks from that Catalan game from round one, but I can, I can actually just move out of the way, and I'm perfectly happy. If you were to capture here, great, I take with the bishop, I'm going to get the d and c files, I have space for my pieces, I can probably capture here at some point, and uh, I'm just okay. Everything is just dandy for me. I'm slightly better. I didn't play this knight a4 for some ridiculous reason. I played this rook in. I totally abandoned the f6 plan. Um, at some point, I need to do something with this knight, and I really struggle to understand what to do with this knight. I just don't feel like I've ever had a good opportunity to bring it into the game. I, I mean, f5 square is the square, and I knew that at some point I was going to have to allow this capture and end up with this sort of awkward structure, um, but in a way, it's okay, because I'm going to get some play against the e-pawn in, uh, in return for this weak d-pawn. Um, but I played rook to fd8, and my, my idea was that I've played this way thinking that I want to swap this bishop out, which I didn't want to do immediately. So, for example, let's say I had a swap here. Uh, I thought something like this would happen. I move out of the way, and then at some point, he might play this. And, like, I have this bishop is never getting out. And I thought, some point, somehow, something will happen bad on the king's side. Because my pieces are all kind of trapped on the queen side now. And, and so I, I just thought this structure was terrible. So that's why I didn't take the light squared bishop, even though I want the light squared bishop gone, because it feels like a really strong attacking piece. Um, so I played rook to d8. My point being that, like, now after c4... Um, I, okay, you can't because I'll take this guy. So, but uh, I just thought that I was going to bring the rooks to the D and C, and after C4, my rook would look great on D8. Not so. Uh, he captures, and now we have a a really big decision. And I I spent a, a long time here, and I, trying to decide what I thought about this, and uh, I rejected this for a dumb reason. I didn't reject it because I necessarily thought it was bad. I rejected it because it was unfamiliar. And I had never seen this kind of pawn structure before, and I didn't really know what to do. Now, in retrospect, why wouldn't you do this? It's a gift. It supports this d4 push, and now my bishop would be totally open, and I, I would be doing great. I didn't like that he was going to get a pass pawn. It turns out he's actually kind of forced to play c3, Makes d4 maybe a touch harder to go. Uh, or I thought I thought this was kind of the likely position. And I, this is no good at all, actually. Um, again, you can go rook to e1 and going to create some problems. So say, for example, oops, not, not f1. I said e1, remember? Here. And um, what am I doing? If I come to f5, um, you can just solidify. And, and now g I can computer wants g5. What is g5? That's wild. I that's just wild. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting smashed off the board here. But I don't have to do that. Instead, I can actually play bishop takes d4, and after bishop takes, 
uh, that distracts. I can bring the knight in. And the likelihood is that these pawns may be going to get exchanged at some point. But even so, my bishop is open. This bishop has something to do. My rook's open. Uh, this looks much, much better than what ends up happening in the game. I went here, and I actually expected him to play this move. And I really wasn't sure how I was going to respond. Most certainly, I was going to play here. And I thought that this would happen, and this would happen. Uh, but I was worried about this e6 move. And, but I guess I just have f6, which is not a move I had considered. It kicks the knight. This pawn is going to be horrendously weak. Uh, this bishop is blunted. And actually, now that I see this, this, this looks relatively okay. So I guess I, I expect why he didn't go for that. He still played a much stronger move, knight to d4. And uh, I like this quite a bit. This is quite a nice move. The point is that uh, this, I thought the point was that the queen was going to come to h5. So for example, random move, queen h5. And then I, I thought that, you know, more random moves, that something like this was going to happen. And uh, this knight was going to be forced to move, and then I would just get mated here. This is what I was afraid of. And so in order to combat that, I played g6. Thinking I was going to shut this down, keep the queen out of here. And now rook to e1. The point is, he's going to move the queen out of the way. He's going to lift the rook. Everything's handy dandy there. So I brought the queen over, thinking that I just needed the queen to help with the defense. So it comes out, just like he expects. And I played queen to h4. Again, probably should just play here, because the queen ends up being kind of in the way, and you're not getting to f6 just yet anyway. So, for example, if similar to the game, captures, captures, uh, or perhaps, yeah, I can, yeah, taking this way was the way I wanted, so that there's no e6 push. And if the queen tries to come here, um, I can actually just go h8. I can bring here, here, and maybe I'm going to be perfectly okay. And... Something like this is likely to occur, and I'm surviving. It's not great, but I'm surviving. And it's not clear how I'm going to get made. This bishop is a little bit stuck out. I mean, he can try to come this way, but I don't know what that's doing. This knight has trouble trying to find a way into the game. And I could probably, probably would hold something like this. Instead, I played queen to h4 and uh, c3. This I was threatening here. I thought maybe there might be some potential for some counterplay somewhere here, and that's why I like this, that it was a bit more active. Uh, but now I play knight f5, we get bishop takes, and I play g takes. Um, I was afraid of this, something like this, but I can actually just ignore it. I play rook e8. If you capture it, no problem. I can just take with the king, and this is safer than it looks. <laughs> um, and, you know... This, this knight I removes, I have this, and these bishops actually look pretty good. I have some places that uh, make sense for my rooks. This would have been probably, I mean, not probably, it's definitely a lot better than what happened in the game. Uh, instead, because I was afraid of opening all these lines, and I was trying to keep things closed, um, I took this way. Uh, but then, this just makes things harder for myself. These bishops aren't coming alive. Rook to e3 happens, and... Uh, I'm in trouble. I mean, f4 is probably the best. I looked at this move. I thought something like this would happen. And uh, maybe I'll go queen g4. And yeah, maybe something will work out there. Instead, I brought the bishop back. Um, why not something like this even? Uh, at this point, it's probably too late for this kind of maneuver. We looked at this in a different line, and it was, it was okay. But now things are coming with tempo. And... Uh, this is, and you know, I, now I have to play like this. The queen comes out to h4. Say I play rook to g8, and uh, yeah, this happens. I'm forced to move out of the way. Queen to f6 happens. I'm forced to come here, and now we're just going to play like this, and it just doesn't just doesn't work anymore. So I opted against this, and I decided to try to bring, uh, sorry, not this, the bishop back to help. I thought I was going to try to keep the queen out of h6, but now he just comes into h3. I've got to kick my, my queen goes back right where it was, and he's going to make his queen come in anyway. I tried to play f6, my idea being that I wanted to try to defend across the seventh rank, but in the meantime, I'm potentially opening up this bishop, which is going to spell lights out, which we see happen soon. Uh, at this point, I'm 
starting to get really low on time, way lower than him. I was way, way, way up on time earlier, but because he spent like that 40 minutes on the one move. But uh, uh, by this point, he's caught back up and behind. I'm just getting outplayed. Brings the other rook in. I'm forced to try to defend um, here. I wanted to, I had some idea that I might try to bring this rook in this way. It doesn't work. Captures here. The knight comes in. He wants to get rid of the dark square bishop. And uh, I should try to stop that, I suppose, but I didn't. Uh, I opted for d4, thinking that, you know, it was worth the pawn just to get my bishop out. Thought maybe he would take it. And, uh, you know, then perhaps I can try to get some sort of play here, but I'm still just lost. Um, instead, he comes here. I have to move. He gets rid of my dark square bishop, and now the dark squares are unfathomably awake. He grabs this guy, and I, I had like a moment of optimism here, because I thought that like maybe I would be able to eventually hide over here, and maybe all of the queens and rooks would come off, and I'd be able to hold the opposite color bishop. That's some optimism for you right there. Um, he plays here. Uh, he could have played this move at any point in the game just to solidify this pawn. Another reason why maybe I should have played a4 at some point. Just putting that out there. Uh, the point is that this bishop's going to come in. So I brought the king here. He gives a check. And uh, I'm going to try to run away. And uh, I kind of expected that this was going to happen. Something like this. And I still had some hopes that perhaps somehow all of the majors would get exchanged. And I might still be able to hold this. So I can't. Uh, he opts not to give this check, and I like the move he played. Rook to g6. Uh, the threat, the incoming threat's pretty clear. This rook is just going to come help. Uh, I played queen to d7 now, thinking that uh, I was going to try to shield away from this check. Uh, but now queen to e5, defending this g7 square, and I, what, what am I going to do? I suppose rook c7 is the only way. Yeah, it's the only way. But then bishop d6 comes, and what what do I gotta do? Play here, and this is getting this is getting pretty crazy. He gives a check. I can try to move out of the way, but then here, and uh, yeah, I just gotta start dumping material. I, I've got nothing. Uh, so instead, I played up. He plays here, and I just got nowhere to go. Uh, if I move the queen, say here. Uh, well, this is going to lead to a mate pretty quickly. Mm, real quick. <laughs> I've got to come back, and it's just mate immediately. There's nothing else to do. Uh, so after this rook g7, I resigned, and I congratulated my opponent. He took first place. Maybe shared first place. I'm not sure. Uh, again, I just got smashed from the beginning. Um, I it, this, is, this game was a lot like the Catalan game, except for I didn't exactly forget my theory here. I just didn't generate any counterplay. I totally uh, neglected to take my opportunities. Uh, instead of just blindly playing queen out to c7, uh, I missed this opportunity to play f6 much early on, which would have drastically changed the nature of the game and would have been somewhat challenging for uh, black to even, or sorry, for white to even know how to play. There's all kinds of ways that white could go wrong. And the way the game went, I never put any pressure on. White could do literally anything they wanted. There was no danger for them whatsoever at any point. And uh, so this was my tournament. Really pretty frustrating, disappointing. This is the first time I've ever really played like a truly bad tournament. Somehow, amazingly, uh, I gained a rating point. <laughs> so uh, I suppose the people I lost to were slightly higher rated than the people I won against. And so it all kind of like worked out such that I gained one rating point. So I guess I can't be that upset about it, but I am pretty disappointed in my play, and uh, I was really feeling pretty low, but I feel motivated to study more. Uh, my studying had kind of fallen off a bit, and uh, <clears throat> now I, I feel like I really want to pick that back up and be more prepared for the next tournament, and that's the, uh, hopefully, uh, when I see these types of lines again, the Catalan and the, the Nimzo, and now the uh, the Carapon, I've, I've got some real ideas about how uh, I can improve and play better in at least these three lines. And that's really what the motivation for me playing in these tournaments are. Uh, when I play in a tournament, at these long time control games, you know, games with you know, three, four, five hour games, I'm spending a lot of time on them. And uh, as I spend this time, it sticks better in my head. And so these are really just training games I'm going to learn from. And the next time I face these lines, I'll be better prepared.
anyhow, thanks a lot. And uh, I hope that this helps you guys in your own tournament journeys. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.